So today's, uh, uh, you know, like session is going to be again about chapter three, the rest of the part of chapter three. So, so, so Chitra Ma, you can start uh, reading the text. Changes sir, in boarding. Actually, I've logged in. Sir, I've logged in through my mobile. I'm not able to, uh, you know, school has started. Our school has started. So I've just logged in through my mobile. Okay, okay. If you give, I'll just join in through my laptop. Then I can read. I'll just take 10 minutes time. Sure. Meanwhile, I'll if start. You can, yeah, yes. Yeah. Aarti ma'am, will you read otherwise? Why not, sir? I can so changes in board examinations. Board examinations should assess the achievements of the competencies for secondary stage as stated in the curriculum. These examinations should provide a valid and reliable pictures of student performance as per the competence in the curriculum. The burden of board examinations on students must be reduced. So, so making them easier and lighter with significant reduced content load, focusing sharply on competences rather than recounting facts, offering the same examination at least twice a year so that students have the option to take the exam a second time and improve. In the long term, all boards should change to semester or term-based exam where students can test in the subject as soon as they have completed the subject, which would further reduce the content load being tested in any one examination. It is the responsibility of board of examinations to design and implement fair, reliable, and valid testing processes and instruments to assess achievements of the articulated competencies and certify students on the basis of this achievement. Articulation of competencies is the responsibility of the appropriate ac academic authority, that is NCRT or SCERT state note. The board examination should be offered at least uh, I think we, we have huh? at least twice a year to ensure that students have enough time and opportunity to perform well. Students can then appear for a board examination in subjects they have completed and feel ready for. This process should be made possible through the creation of a comprehensive test item bank, which can be used to create tests using suitable I mean, software. They will enable to move, enable the move towards a system of on-demand examinations in the near future as described in NEP 2020. Vocational education, art education, and physical education and well-being are an integral part of the curriculum in the NCF. However, in this case, much of the assessment will have to be demonstrated by demonstration based and not written exam based. It is recommended that. 75% of the weightage is overall certification to be given to such demonstration-based assessment and only 25% to any written examination. Boards will also need to design and implement high-quality systems which can locally assess on the basis of demonstration that will be at the school. This will need to be implemented independent from the school yet operationally, operationally feasible. Science and other subjects also need to have demonstration-based assessments, example, conducting experiments. This should have 20 to 25% weightage in the overall certification of the subject. This kind of assessment currently happens but only needs significant improvement for validity and objectivity that is similar to item E above. Selection of test developers, reviewers, translators, and evaluators for board examinations should be based on a rigorous process based on detailed guidelines. Boards of examination should ensure all test developers, reviewers, and evaluators to go through formal university certified courses on test development before they begin this work. In addition, there should be ongoing capacity building of test developers, evaluators, and reviewers to support them in the design of high quality test instruments. Fine, test development. So we will summarize till here and then we will go to the next part. Yes. Let me share the screen with you. Yes, ma'am. Aarti, ma'am. Yes, sir. Actually, we had read about stresses, mm -hmm. stress the children have been facing due to the board examination. So this mm. is what they are, they have come up with the suggestions, yet mm. not implemented. So mm. they are trying to reduce it through multiple actions. They are making it easier. The content has to be divided into two. It has to be con 
based on competences rather than you know recall they don't have to yeah. learn the entire thing they only have to understand the content it is going to be twice a year that means students will get a second chance to improve as well then offering the same examination and in the long term it will be term based so syllabus will be divided into two rather two rather than you know recounting everything in one this exam yes. then they have come up with the responsibilities that they have to be fair i mean the national testing agency has to be reliable so sir if you have heard about this neat examination so many questions have been raised on nta so that is how i mean they expect that it it the process the entire process is very fair very reliable and valid testing process should be there then it should be offered at least twice a year this we have already taken then vocational education art education and physical education which only grade is there so 75% is demonstration based that means children are actually performing it on the ground and you know it it should be basically performed then vocational exam yes another exam yeah so 20 mm. to 25% weightage has to be there for the practical things and then even those who are evaluators or translators or whatever they should get a proper training mm -hmm. i mean uh, you know capacity building of these people should also be there that's what they have any if anything i have missed no you have covered all the things ma'am now test yes. development process now what you do is read every paragraph i mean every point and you summarize the point then and there okay so test development processes for written examination should be significantly streamlined again it is streamlining only that is required some illustrative steps are given below creating assessment framework is the first step to start the process assessment frameworks ensure a well articulated basis for deciding what to test such frameworks detail out the competencies learning outcomes and content domain to be assessed so that is again objective so what is to be tested so a proper framework has to be there whether it is competency whether it is learning outcome or whether what all in the content designing a blueprint which is based on the assessment framework is the next step so first is i mean we have to have a framework second we have to design a blueprint this blueprint is a planning document where all relevant information for a test is listed it is usually a working document which undergoes change during the process of test item designing the information in the blueprint include again competencies learning outcomes and content domains to be tested format of test item whether it is mcq short questions short written questions or others length of the test and marking scheme so blueprint we all prepare in our school what to be tested how to be tested and what is the marks and time that is then comes designing good quality test items and scoring guides is a third step broadly test item formats are of two kinds selected response question that is mcqs true false where students must select the correct response from the options provided and constructed response question where the students must develop the correct response they have to write the answers some important quality parameters to be kept in mind while designing the test items are language clarity factual accuracy quality of distractors and choice of stimulus materials that is graphic illustration maps used so the marking schemes are as important as the test items themselves so whether it has to be mcq true false or whether students have to write the answers and then what all what type of stimulus are to be there so all these things are to be kept in mind and once the test items are developed a rigorous review procedure that is test item paneling with an expert group should be ensured marking scheme should also be reviewed along with the test items boards of examination should ensure periodic rigorous review of the quality of the test instruments designed so this is all about how to you know make a question paper what all should be there so how blueprint has to be ready how we have to test design good questions and once it is done how we have to attempt it the expert group has to attempt it and review it again so that so we can analyze it. how children can write if adults are giving a you know like exam and they're testing it then we can also assess whether it is uh, apt for the students yes. yes assessing values and dispositions in board examinations let us go with suchitra ma'am yeah. suchitra ma'am 
assessing values and dispositions in board exams assessing values and dispositions in board exams development of values and dispositions is best assessed through everyday school processes and based on observation and recording by the teacher this is described in part b chapter 2 if values and dispositions must be assessed through board examinations they should be done with very careful thought and thorough preparation while standardized psychometric tests and individual diagnostic tests are available that are best avoided for this purpose two possible methods are given below in options 1 and 2 boards of examination may devise their own methods based on similar underlying principles option 1 give students questions based on the subject being assessed that are written in story formats and involve a certain con conflict in their premise the idea is to understand how students expect the protagonist in the story to respond to the said conflict, conflict. these conflict these conflicts uh, should range from matters of inequality to issues of collaboration to using problem solving abilities what matter is to allow the student being assessed to be a third party providing an opinion or solution to a problem given in a story removing the onus of direct personal response to a given situation may help students choose a response that reflects the student's own thought and not that which the student perceives as acceptable designing such story questions must be done with care the rubrics for assessing responses to these story questions also need to be carefully crafted and consistently applied across student responses can you Option summarize two. this this part first then we'll go to the next one yes so um, uh, options are given uh, like before the um, instead of giving it like what is given now we should go for the certain options um, having different um, underlying principles like first one is giving questions like story so that um, uh, the student acts as a third party and gives his opinion not whatever is acceptable so um, designing such type of story questions uh, but must be done with care and rubrics for assessing responses to these story questions should be carefully crafted and consistently applied across student responses this is what is given in option one mm. option yeah. two uh, mm. focus on assessment of values and dispositions through examination for physical education and well-being vocational education art education all of which have significant practice and demonstration components all these three subjects have values and dispositions strongly built into their curricular goals and competences assessment of achievement of these uh, assessment of achievement of these competences will also need carefully designed tasks and rubrics for assessment that are coherent consistent and meaningful across student groups great so in Ch yes option summarize it yeah so focus should be given on uh, sports uh, and well-being and vocational subjects also values also um, uh, also art education which uh, which can be done through uh, practice and demonstration of components uh, these three subjects uh, should be built strongly into curricular goals and competences and assessment of uh, these competences also will have proper rubrics for assessment proper rubrics should be made which must be coherent consistent and meaningful across the group of students great uh, chitra ma'am is it possible for you to read or uh, shall we continue like this for today sir i won't be able to one i'm on the mobile it's too small for me to see okay okay i'll we will read it i'm just saying and yeah i'll go back and read the document also okay okay thank you yeah. So challenges of entry into higher, higher education, it's okay ma'am. As NEP 2020 explicitly recognizes India currently has a shortage of high quality higher education institutions. It's clearly said that there are, you know, like institutions in a very less number which can provide us high quality education. This has created a situation where the vast majority of students wanting to pursue higher education are competing for the relatively small capacity available in the high quality higher education institution. So what is happening? Children are competing constantly to get the admissions into 
the institutions wherein they are providing high quality education. This situation is a significant cause of many of the most serious problems being faced by secondary state students in India. So this is leading to lots of problems for the secondary state students. Let us see what those problems are, especially stress, highest amount of stress. And unfortunately, too often serious mental health issues also are arising. So this is not limited to the students themselves, but also affects their families. Of course, if our children are unable to do well in their education, it affects the family. A widespread culture of coaching and tutoring, feeding commercial interests, leveraging this high competition situation. Okay, these are also certain problems like, uh, you know, coaching centers have become more, tutoring centers have become more, you know, like uh, commercial interests are being promoted. So all these are leading to high competition. A tendency to ignore real learning and focus on cracking the entrance test, entrance test or the board examination, whichever are used for college admissions. Okay, so the whole concentration is being laid upon cracking the examinations rather than learning the concept. NEP 2020 has a comprehensive set of recommendations to address this very significant set of challenges, including some that have been implemented already, such as the common university entrance test, and some that are being planned and implemented, such as substantial expansion of the number of high quality higher education institutions. So they have, you know, come up with a common uh, an idea that we will conduct common uh, entrance tests for the students. Apart from that, even increasing the, uh, you know, like uh, educational institutions wherein they will provide higher quality, high quality education. This NCF is taking clear steps to address the curricular matters in schools that contribute to the curriculum a current undesirable situation, including the significant matters pertaining to board examinations addressed in this chapter. So we are also going to look into certain matters that are dealt with board examinations in the upcoming chapter. So this way we are done with chapter three. Now let us get into chapter four, which is all about time allocation. So Aarti ma'am, let us start with you again. Yes, sir. <clears throat> time allocation. Time is an invaluable resource in every school. Thus, the allocation of time to different activities and areas of learning, which is often referred to as the timetable, must be carried out very carefully. It must consider practical aspects such as time avail available, but also must entable the op operationalization of the curriculum, including its priorities and balance. Summarize this section it. describes... Yeah. So basically, they are all talking about how to balance the time, what all, I mean, how the timetable has to be there so that proper time has to be given to each and every subject. You know, I mean, we have to see how things have been operated in the school and it, it should be enabled through proper time allocation. Timetable should be a balanced one, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, whatever, whichever subject is a priority, like we give 10 periods to maths and 6 periods to Hindi. So, you know, this is how... We have to see priority wise balance has to be maintained. This section describes the principles and approach to time allocation in a school that would bring this NCF to life. The specific time allocations described in this section must be seen as illustrative and the actual time allocations must be considered by schools in accordance with their context using these principles and approach. So they have given us a proper time allocation, but still they have given us freedom to pick up pick it up, you know, as per our, uh, how we are going to conduct it in our school in accordance with the context in which we are working. Great. So You can summarize it. So, I mean, it seems, uh, sir, they, I mean, through this picture, they have shown, you know, how different curricular activities are there along with the studies. That's what so I have understood. have to give a uh, space for even Probably. curricular activities and co-curricular activities. activities in the yes. time Whether table. it is music, whether it is sports, so it has to be taken. So section 4.1 is considera considerations for reduction of content load. As mentioned in NEP 2020 and discussed earlier, if the care has been taken to ensure a reduction in the content load across curricular areas while designing the learning standards of this NCF. This reduction in the content load across the stages has been chalked out with the following considerations. Adequate time and space should be created for the development of genuine conceptual understanding and the development of capacities rather than mere procedural or rote learning, which often occurs due to content overload. 
so main content what understanding has to be there the concept should be there rather than you know overloading students or giving more what is not required so we have to identify i think it is at the teachers level to identify what has to be given more time rather than wasting time in studying the reading the entire thing or giving the entire thing in the class requisite space and time are needed for the curricular areas that have renewed focus and emphasis like art education physical education and vocational education so proper time and space has to be there for these often these areas have earlier been considered co-curricular or not important without or inadequate specific learning standards and expectations in this ncf they need explicit and significant time allocation so art education we know physical education, all these are co-curricular. I mean, actually, they were called extracurricular before. Then they mm -hmm. became co-curricular. And now it seems they are becoming a main part of the curriculum. The teaching time available in a working day over an academic year for various co curricular areas and their distribution of weeks timetable is limited. And it poses a challenge to the achievement of content, knowledge, focused learning. That's quite clear. Time is, I mean, very less. Less in the sense there are so many holidays. Sometimes it is because of monsoon. Sometimes it is because of sunny days and lot of winter. So there also it further reduces. So it is a challenge. So how to achieve this? These three factors imply that the content load in some curricular areas need to be rationalized and reduced. This will ensure both that these curricular areas are learned meaningfully and the space is created for other curricular areas. So again, the three factors which I've given, they told that they, according to that, content load needs to be cut down, rationalized, reduced. The curriculum has been designed with an explicit focus on a range of essential competences and not coverage of content knowledge. Hence, the content load in terms of amount of the content to be learned in a particular school stage has been reduced. This also means that competencies must be viewed as the core essential and the overall time available must enable their achievement. So main target is achievement of competencies rather than teaching the content. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. The illustrative timetable given later in this section might show an increased amount of time in the working day and week when compared to the existing school time. This increase in the number of daily hours at school does not directly indicate a heavier content load in individual curricular areas. The actual decision on the exact number of working hours would be taken by the school or the school systems and the proportion and the rhythm of illustrative timetable in NCF could still be held. So they have illustrated, they have shown the time has increased. But whether the school has to increase the time or not, it depends. The I mean, the freedom is still there with the school the authorities. Schools, yes. In the illustration, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what exactly is the minimum number of working days a school should have? We are going there, ma'am. I think. Okay. Actually, fine, it fine. is uh, one. Mm, 120 to I think, but then it is 10 or 220. 220, I remember. Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh, but we are not getting that. Na? That only I want to ask. Sitra, ma'am, two... that's what I'm saying. Half of the days are declared holidays. Maybe you know, yeah, political exactly. are there. I mean, exactly. Monsoons, winters, summers. Yeah. Summers. So we are taking very less. Yes. Yeah, that is why. That is why. Okay, we are coming to that means I'll get it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we will be going into that uh, thing. So 222, 220 or 222 are the working days and 120 holidays, not more than that, if I'm not wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. Isn't it? Including the summer vacation and all. Yes. Isn't it? In the illustrative timetable given here, curricular areas such as languages, mathematics, science and social science may show a lower number of annual hours a, a proportion to them compared to the number of hours they may have received earlier in school. This has been made possible by focusing on the core essentials in terms of competencies as in the learning standards in these areas. So they have given us the lower number of annual hours. Some of the points relevant to specific curricular areas for the design choices made to reduce content are as follows. 
in science, the focus on essential capacity of scientific inquiry allows for the rationalization of content. The concepts are therefore chosen based on the opportunities they provide for developing these capacities, thus reducing content load. So we have to see only scientific inquiry needs to be developed while teaching science. So if there is any content which goes beyond that can be avoided. In mathematics, whatever is specialized prerequisite knowledge for certain types of higher education needs has been moved from the compulsory curricular content to the choice-based curriculum in the secondary stages while retaining all concepts, areas that are foundational to the subject. What, what does it mean, sir? Whatever is special is prerequisite knowledge for certain types of higher education needs. The basic so, prerequisite knowledge which is needed for every chapter, the, the content that is there in the uh, you know textbook, that also has to be added. Okay. Other than that, if there is anything extra that can be moved out from the content. Okay. Choice-based curriculum in secondary stage while retaining all concepts or areas that are, uh, you know, like uh, that are foundational to the subject as we are going with choice-based subjects. Okay. So whatever, uh, you know, like uh, content is there in 9, 10, 11 and 12, it should be useful for the higher education. That content should be useful for the higher education. If at all, any content which is not useful for higher education is found, that can be moved out, expelled from the curriculum. Then, do you think it has something to do with the foundation? Because, you know, whatever it is built, I mean, whatever concept is given, maths is built on that concept only. So, you cannot avoid anything and everything in maths. So, you know, a foundation has to be strong. No, so like we last cannot... year or before last year, we, even in 10th grade NCRT textbook, they have removed one chapter which they felt was not that much needed. In social also, constantly they are removing one or two chapters every year. Isn't it? Mm. So whichever content is not useful for your higher... See, especially secondary schools, secondary curriculum is a curriculum which lays foundation to crack the exams of you know upcoming professional courses like if they want to go to engineering or medicine or such sort of things if at all this content is not useful for that then what's the matter having it that is the point here so they are trying to retain all the concept which are required for the competitions and others they are removing it. yeah which Maybe. are uh, use needed for professional education yes. that's it that's how it's higher education science. yeah and in social science the op approach based on themes and levels ensures the learning of essential competences while reducing content load again essential they, competences in this is social skills basically that's it mm -hmm. in language education there are three languages to be learned in school education through grade 10 a range of literary curricular goals are transferable from a non known language to the learning of unfamiliar language and those that are specialized linguistic and literary goals have been moved to the choice-based curricular areas of the secondary stage, keeping only the core essential competencies until grade 10. Yes. Only core essential competencies are to be maintained till grade 10. Okay. Like, uh, again, as per choice-based, uh, you know, curriculum, if the children are choosing, then they'll be learning, you know, like, uh, which are very much needed. But then that even the, in the last chapter we have learned, even in languages, we are supposed to assess the language skills, not the content that they have learned. Yeah. Moving on to section 4.2, Suchitra so ma'am. Yeah. Foundational stage. You read each and every section paragraph and summarize it. Okay, sir. Section 4.2, foundational stage. Young children enjoy using their free time to explore their immediate environment. However, as they grow older, they also need organized, structured, and guided activities that are play-based. The day needs to be carefully organized so that all developmental domains receive adequate time and attention. While activities of such domain are connected with other domains, for example, a good story will help language development as well as socio-emotional and ethical development. The routine must ensure that children get ample opportunity for a range of experiences in every uh, domain. Consideration for daily routine. Um, in that, it was said, actually, uh, children um, uh, learn more in a play way method. Like, uh, so there should be some ways, like, for example, a storytelling can improve their um, uh, ethical and um, uh, moral. moral values. 
Yes. Uh, plus, uh, they will learn their, I mean, language development will also take place. Uh, if a story. And teachers have to plan different types of activities for the children. Or yes, throughout the day. Yes. Yeah, throughout the day. And it should be a balanced one and a careful one. Yes, yes. A balanced one and careful. So uh, you have to scroll up. A little. Scroll down, I think. Scroll down. Yes. More. Little more. Yeah, consideration for daily routine. Considerations for the daily routine. The organization of the day is based on the institutional setting, the number of working days and the number of daily working hours for each day. Each activity may be planned, keeping in mind the attention span of the child. There may be a balance between child-initiated and teacher-guided activities, group, whole group or small group, and individual or pair activities and alternating activities. Quieter activity, after physical activity, group activity, after individual activity, indoor activity, after outdoor activity. So, um, it is depending, all these activities are based on the institutional, I mean, the number of working days, the working hours for uh, the uh, teachers and um, the institutional setting. So, each activity has to be uh, planned, keeping in mind the attention span of the child, actually. Uh, like, for example, if we take a class for a long period of time, then half of the things they do not even listen to and they forget and there should also be some um, group activities like um, individual, um, I mean, pair, think, pair and share activity type of things uh, like teacher guided and also by uh, child centric um, actions, like mm. more uh, child centric and less of teacher uh, guided uh, activities. Yes. Mm. Then um, art and craft, outdoor play and free play must have adequate time and focus in the day. So they are focusing more on art and craft, um, outdoor, outdoor play. play and free play. What is free play, sir? We have to leave the child to explore on his own. Uh, okay. Free play is that thing. Like we just leave the child. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the child plays on his own. Okay. So we have to organize free play in such a way that uh, there are things for the child has to go and explore. Maybe you can leave okay. the child with few, you know, alphabets, few numbers, mm -hmm. okay, few toys or else few story cards and all, wherein the child, he himself, he will go, he will choose something and he will try to explore it. Rather but than asking can... him to sit at one play and uh, you sit at one place and play with the things given, what we do is we arrange the things and we leave the child. Okay, child will go to any place, any corner in the classroom and he will start playing and he will explore through that. Okay. So, but this, is it, is this applicable to the senior classes? No, this is only for foundation stage, right? Foundation. Till grade. Okay. 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 Illustrative daily routine for ages 3 to 6. There are hmm. multiple ways to organize the daily routine for children of ages 3 to 6. Two illustrations are given below. The first illustration is more appropriate in context where experience such as circle time, story time and concept, free numeracy time are teacher guided and free play and corners time are independent activities for the children. So from uh, this is the routine given like circle time and conversation for 45 minutes, then snack break 15 minutes, then rhyme song, music movement 15 minutes, one hour concept time and free numeracy, then art craft and free play 30 minutes, then corners time, 45 minutes, then 45 minutes for lunch break, then 45 minutes emergent literacy, story time, 30 minutes outdoor play and wind up. So this is this how... Corners uh, time is like different corners. You have literacy corner, you have morals and ethics corner, you have general awareness corner in the same classroom. So the child will go to each corner and uh, with the help of the aids which are lying over there, the child will play. Also, it yeah. will be helped by the teacher. If they have some queries, that can be teacher can yes. facilitate. Yes. Hmm. This is for three to six. Hmm. Ages three to six. The second illustration is more appropriate in context with fewer children. This is not three to six. Kids. It is the second illustration of same age group. But the upper one was, uh, you know, like uh, with more children. This is for less yeah, children. Yeah, yeah. That is what I was saying. That these two illustrations are for three to six. Yes. And this yes. is the second one. The first one I read was uh, for more children and this is for fewer children. Mm -hmm. The second illustration is more appropriate in concept with uh, context with fewer children and where there is a range of appropriate material available for them to use. 
emphasis is on self learning and children learn to use materials independently and with care work time is allotted for children to independently choose the activity they would like to engage with children select activities of their choice and work with materials on those activities independently teachers observe children's activity and extend support as and when required teachers mm -hmm. also decide and present the next activity to an individual child based on their observations during work time activities and the corresponding materials are arranged according to the domains of development like physical cognitive language art and children are made familiar with this arrangement so second illustration is more appropriate in context with fewer children and uh, uh, materials that are available like when pri mostly private schools i think uh, they are talking about um, uh, emphasis is on self learning and uh, children use materials independently and they also learn how to take care of those materials yes then um, activity is done teachers observe the children during the activities and if needed 